What's up, RPG fans? Welcome to episode 42 of the Switch RPG Podcast. I am the only host today. Uh, my name is Gio, also known as the Nerd Basement. And uh, yeah, I'm doing fine. We had the Pokemon Direct today. We had uh, we have some other news um, that we have to get to as far as uh, next week's show is concerned. Uh, we have tons of stuff going on today. If this is your first time listening, ladies and gentlemen, this is the show from SwitchRPG.com that brings exciting news, upcoming game releases, and everything happening in the world of RPGs on the Nintendo Switch. Again, like I said, this week we have the Pokemon Direct. Um, we have a game I'm really, really interested in, Oninaki. Oninaki, like, come on. Are you guys interested in this game? You, sh you should be. You should be. Um, and what else do we got? We have more uh, Fallout 76 news. Of course, um, Fallout, not Fallout, Final Fantasy uh, 12. Um, they dropped some trailers, also some tidbits on what's going to be included in this new uh, go around for the Nintendo Switch. So, some quick housekeeping. Make sure you take the time. If you enjoy the podcast, leave us a rating, a review on any app that you're using for this podcast, especially the audio ones. It really helps us in the rankings. Um, again, enough enough begging. Um, also, we have a great Discord community. Don't forget to visit discord.switchrpg.com. You join in the conversations right now. We have excellent conversation going on in the Pokemon channel. Um, fall, uh, final, I keep saying Fallout. Final Fantasy channel, uh, as well as uh, just a general RPG channel. I mean, we have lots of stuff going on there. Also, we had a uh, we had an AMA of sorts with uh, Stealth from Twitter. Um, again, went really well. Really excited to see a lot of new faces in there or new IDs. I, I don't know. Lastly, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel where you can watch our Let's Plays game reviews and join us when I finally do this uh, thing. Um, the past few times, it's been a little difficult. Uh, I don't know. My computer's just been... I don't even know. It's been a pain in the butt. But that's enough for housekeeping. Let's jump in to the news. First and foremost, we had a major, major news break with Reggie. Reggie has retired. Um, he's been part of Nintendo for a long time, at least for 15 years, 13 of them as the president. Um, let's see. He joined in 2003 as the executive vice president of sales and market marketing, a role similar to the one actually his, uh, his now, uh, the person who was taking over, uh, holds Bowser, Doug Bowser. Um, now that this shift in power is, is again, he, Reggie is retiring a little young, but that's okay. Because he's retiring with his health, this is kind of this is a this is okay. This is going to be a big deal. But again, we're going to make it. I, I I'm interested because Reggie, Reggie, like this, he was part of the Nintendo family. Like you associated him. He was he he seemed like he, I don't know, like he, he was so passionate about Nintendo and the way the way we did things. He took he took memes. And he he like he embraced them um, like your body is Reggie. He, he's just he was just a really 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 cool character, and I hope Doug will be something like that. We're like we're really connected to Reggie, and I really hope Doug will be that person. And I think he might be. I, I think he might be. Uh, so Reggie he he released a statement. He also did a uh, kind of a video that you can see on YouTube. Uh, but again, in his statement, Nintendo owns part of my heart forever. It's part of. It's a part that is filled with gratitude for the incredibly talented people I've worked with, for the opportunity to represent such a wonderful brand, and most of all, to feel like a member of the world's most positive and enduring gamer community. As I look forward to departing in both good health and good humor, this is not game over for me, but instead leveling up one more time with my wife, family, and friends. So he's he's looking forward to life. You know, he's in that. He's got the opportunity to do that. So um, 
best of luck to Reggie. I really hope everything works out. Now, on to Doug. I, I really, really, like I said, I hope he connects with fans. I hope we have that, um, you know, that connection. And, you know, it, it's tough to say at this point. We really haven't seen too, too much of Doug. Now, he's been in some E3s, some Nintendo Directs, but again, it hasn't been that much. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But Bowser, uh, I... His name is Bowser. I mean, how how awesome is that? Uh, but he did offer the following statement on the announcement. It has been my great fortune to work with and be mentored by Reggie for four years at Nintendo of America. Rest assured, we will continue to build on his work to evolve and expand our brand, furthering Nintendo's global mission of creating smiles. There are millions more of those to come. And I really, really hope so. Um, so yeah, I mean, what do you guys think about this? Do you think, you know, this is, it's, we'll just kind of roll through this or, you know, will we, will we, will we notice it at all? You know? Um, I mean, like I said, Reggie, he held a place, um, in our hearts and, you know, he will be missed. He will be missed, but he's not gone. He's not, he's not really gone, gone. Um, but yes, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. All right, yes, next, big, big news. We had the Pokemon Direct. Um, um, some good information. We have uh, the three starters as well as the name of the region. Um, the name of the region is the Galar region. And it's it's interesting because I think I think this, this represents, and the rumor, not rumors, but a lot of people have kind of uh, gone through the, the, the video and kind of really dove deep into it. It looks like it's, it's modeled after England. Uh, so you could, there's a Tower of Big Ben. There's some stone carvings that people have looked at. And yes, it makes sense. Uh, the, trailer, the trailer looked really cool. Actually, I actually liked the new look. Um, of it all, I like the underground caverns that they showed off. Um, they did kind of deviate from what they started in Pokemon Let's Go, uh, with the uh, with the capture mechanic. It's actually it looks like it's going to be the battle mechanic, which I am okay with. Um, now it doesn't look as like a sterile environment like Pokemon Let's Go. Uh, it looks like a lived-in environment, so that again is really, really nice to see. And it's I was really I was wondering what they were going to show with this because again, this is their first, you know, on a, on a on an actual console, you know, their first iteration of this. And you know, I I was kind of concerned a little bit. I I, I wasn't sure what they were going to show, but I loved it. I liked the. I hope the music, the music was really, really cool. I hope that music transfers over into this new, uh, this new game, which is actually called, I'm sorry, I didn't even say it. It's called Sword and Shield. All the, a lot of the rumors were very wrong about this. And apparently they did have King and Queen in mind, um, but they didn't, they, they chose uh, Sword and Shield, which is cool. I, I like it. I really do like it. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the, the starter, Pokemon. So you have, you know, you have your uh, grass type, you have a fire type, a water type. The grass type is a chimp, uh, a monkey, a green monkey called Grookey. Uh, then we have our fire type, a rabbit Pokemon called Scorbunny. And then you have our water type lizard, Sobble, um, also known as Sadness from Inside Out. What a depressing, <laughs> depressing Pokemon. Um, just comes out of the water like, okay, all right, use my Pokemon powers. Almost reminds me a little bit of uh, kind of uh, Eeyore and Snorlax. If you could combine those with uh, with a you know a water type lizard, that's that's kind of what it would remind me of. Um, but yeah, really, uh, you know, they're different. You know, they're Pokemon. The, these I don't know how they come up with some of these names. I feel like they've run out of you know, run out of ideas. Uh, but I'm interested in seeing what they do, what their evolutions are, you know, um, and things like that. Now, we really, and that's pretty much all that was shown. Like I said, they showed some underground areas. They showed some Pokemon gyms. They showed a battle arena. Um, that, you know, th there really wasn't too much 
there uh, other than yes it, they verified that it is indeed a new generation of pokemon which they you know they did said but it say but it looks like the traditional type pokemon game they 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 kind of strayed away from the pokemon let's go uh you know which is okay cuz i think what that did is it brought a new audience into the pokemon games and maybe this will kind of help them stick around but i like the new look of it not, it's not really a new look. It just looks, uh, I don't know. It looks better. I think it looks better. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, what do you guys think? Who are you guys going to start with? For me, I think I might. See, this is this is kind of a, actually, this is a really, really tough, <laughs> tough decision. Uh, because this is your Pokemon like for life. So who would I pick for my starter? You know, after I did make fun of <laughs> of sadness, you know, the water type lizard Sobble, but I think I would probably go for that. Um, although I do like the grass chimp, so it's kind of between the water type and the grass chimp. I don't know. Who, do you, who are you guys picking? That's that's kind of who I'm leaning to. Yeah, Sobble. But anyways, I'm moving on. Again, I did mention this game before. I am, I'm like hooked on this game. It's not out yet, obviously, but I'm really, really interested in this game. By Tokyo RPG Factory, Oninaki. It's an action RPG. It's such a, 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 a change into what they used to do. And I'm absolutely loving it. I love the look of it since the direct. I can't, I'm like... I'm like obsessed with it. I gotta have more. So we we got some new screens from it, which look phenomenal to me. Anyways, there's a lot of um a lot of really vibrant colors in this. And and again, what I really like about it is that it's an action RPG. It's not their traditional turn based RPG. Um, and they recently had an interview with, uh, let me see, interview with Famitsu on how they became an action RPG. Again, it's not really earth-shattering stuff, um, but we have Atushi Hashimoto, the director. At first, I tried making an RPG with a lone protagonist. I even threw in a drawing of Dragon Quest One in the drafts. Since there wasn't going to be any party members, I thought about throwing in job elements and looked into all kinds of things. And then the producer chimes in, uh, Ryutaro Sasaki. Uh, so, wouldn't an RP action RPG be better with this plan? Again, with the single protagonist. And then Hashimoto chimes in. Even within the team, many have voiced their desire for an action RPG. So it wasn't like uh, S uh, Sasaki-san used his voice of authority, but he simply pushed the discussion. Actually, when making an I am when making I am Setsuna and Lost Sphere, we made it in a way that action RPGs are made with hit collisions in the battle using skill and range and such. Also, that we could possibly make an action RPG in the future. And then the creative producer Takashi Takito chimes in as well. Oh, now there's a guy that can get some stuff done, and they all kind of laugh. So yeah, I mean they they're kind of saying with Lost Sphere and I am Setsuna that they were already think of the thinking of doing an action an rpg which for me honestly i don't believe whatever it's a change in their direction and it looks really good uh as long as it plays well and it's got a really good narrative i mean that's all the things you really want in a game right you want it to play well you want it to have a good narrative which i think it will um so again i'm really really obsessed with this game if you haven't heard of it if you didn't if you had your eyes closed during the direct whatever Take a look at this game, okay? Oninaki. You will not regret it. It looks really cool. All right. So, yes, moving along, we have Final Fantasy X and, and X2 HD Remaster, along with Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. Again, coming out for Xbox One, as well as the Switch, which is what we care about here. Uh, so, some key features in the game that I'm really interested in in Final Fantasy XII um, we have a license reset function. We have an additional Gambit set. So Gambits allow players to customize their party's AI. 
and the license reset is by talking to a clan and Centurio's leader. Again, you kind of have to know about the uh, mechanics in the game. Uh, so, it, it again, it allows you to change jobs, basically, in the game. And then they have improved New Game Plus. So this is not just a straight-up port. This is this. There's been some uh, modifications to it, some quality-of-life changes. So improve. New Game Plus allows users to start the game with party members at level 90 and carry over some items like weapons, magic, and gill obtained in previous playthroughs. And specific to the Xbox One X, it supports 60 FPS, which we will never see on our current Nintendo Switches. So yes, they did release some new uh, trailers for this. Uh, take a look at them. Um, you won't regret it. Now... In saying this, the file sizes, you may want to upgrade your uh, SD cards because, the again, just look. I don't know what Final Fantasy X and X2 is. I guess I could look really quick. But Final Fantasy 12 is a smooth 12 gigabytes. So you will need, uh, let me just uh, hang on a second, type this in. You will need a, an additional, uh, you need space for it. So either make space, buy a new card, whatever you have to do, you will need that air, that that space. Um, let me see. So Final Fantasy X, let me just see. I'm looking on switchlist.com to see how big it is. Holy cow, it is 14 gigs. Uh, but it, I mean, it is two games. Don't get me wrong. And they're HD, they're remastered. But 14 gigs gigs holy cow that is quite a bit now they probably not probably they will have the ugly you know you will need a micro st for additional content on the covers but the first run of them they did say that it will be reversible i don't know why other companies don't do that my god please if you're gonna put that ugly hideous cover you know, I feel like at least a quarter of the Switch cover has that ugly, you know, downloadable. Con Give us a reversible cover. That's all we ask. It's not. It's not going to break the bank, will it? Ah, man, it just do something for us. Anyways, a little tangent, not a big deal. But again, the first run of it will have a reversible cover, which I love um, because I will be getting Final Fantasy 12. I actually got it when it first came out. And I think I talked about this on, on the podcast in, um, I don't know, a while, a while back. I bought it. I didn't really like it. Now, I didn't really like it because it wasn't what I was expecting from Final Fantasy. Because I went from Final Fantasy X to Final Fantasy XII. Okay, Final Fantasy X is traditional Final Fantasy turn-based. Now, then you go to... Your Final Fantasy XII, which is almost like a real-time turn base. It's it's just, it was different. It felt different. I didn't like it. But now, you know what? I learned to like it because um, many games have done it. They've replicated it. This kind of started a little bit of a trend with some RPGs. And I, <laughs> I started playing it on my PS2. Now, this game, I looked at it. It's brand new. It, <laughs> my original PlayStation, I still have it. It is brand new. My receipt's still in it. The instruction manual looks like it's never been touched because it has never been touched for real. And I played it. I actually liked it. What's wrong with me? You know, I, I really wish I got into it back then, but I didn't. It is what it is. Anyways... We always grow, we grow, we change, the tastes change, all that stuff. All right, now for the weekly Fallout 76 update. It's really not even bad news. It's not bad news at all, unless, I don't know, you consider any Fallout 76 update bad news. They'll be getting some, uh, let's see, do, 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 Fallout. Uh, Bethesda has announced... Some more major update plans for the online survival RPG Fallout 76. The, us, the updates will also be released for free and are split into three major groups. Okay, so the first part is this. It's kind of like, I'll, it's not, I'll call it DLC. It's called Wild Appalachia, which will arrive March 12th. Uh, it includes two new quests called Sheer Terror and Ever Upwards, Legendary Gear, uh, Camp Decorating, Player vending, a new camera, brewing, distilling, 
uh, recipes uh, parade uh, or what is this? It's fashionate. I don't know. It's a parade. It's a seasonal event and a new game mode called survival game mode. Now, this is what really caught my attention. Isn't this already a survival game? So they've ad- they're adding a survival game mode. I don't know. Whatever. Bethesda, you really, you really messed things up. And I and, and this has been a steady topic in recent episodes. What have they been doing? What have they been thinking? I just don't. I don't know. Can they can't just pull the plug on this? I really wish they would, but I mean that would really, really not go so well. So, yeah, whatever. There'll be more Fallout 76 updates as we continue with Switch RPG podcasts. Moving along. All right, now there's a new game. Uh, again, one that I'm I'm into by the same developers who made the game called Fury. Now, if you've played the game Fury, it's um it's really interesting. It's I don't believe it's an RPG. It's more of an action adventure game. Um I don't even know why I'm wearing the helmet. <laughs> the, these these uh headphones. I'm not even listening to anyone. Anyways, um so Fury these it's an action game, but they they're making a, an adventure RPG called Haven. This game looks really, really interesting. So let's let's take a listen to the description. Play as two lovers who escape to a lost planet. The only thing that matters is to stay together. A RPG to play solo or with that special someone. So if you're if you're part of a couple who loves RPGs, this may be perfect for you guys. Uh, so Haven will be available on PC and consoles. Again, play solo with a friend. You can, again, you can get it on Steam. They have a Discord you can go to, but I'd rather you join our Discord. Um, anyways, so really, really, really cool aesthetic. It, it, it's got a lot of the same vibrant colors as Oninaki. <laughs> so you're kind of seeing a theme with my tastes, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but again, take a look at Haven. I really think it's it's going to do well. So that's my little spiel for uh for Haven. And I think lastly I have here Anthem. Okay. Now Anthem has not been well received. This seemed like it was BioWare's like last ditch effort to almost save themselves from themselves. Now, Bioware, their last game, which some people, it's, it was a little divisive because some people liked Mass Effect Andromeda. I personally did not like it. The the facial animations and the in the in the voice acting was really bad. The game just seemed really, it had such a big budget. It just seemed really rushed to me, and I just, it didn't feel like a Mass Effect game. It was just, I don't know what it was about it. I just really didn't enjoy it. I probably played maybe five to ten hours of it and it just wasn't wasn't my thing so again i i moved on from that really quick and then you have anthem which i had no interest in in getting but just hearing the reviews on it now i'm i'm over here at rpg site and the reviewer here let me just let me get his name if i can dude what is your name what is your name uh, one is, all right, her name is Natalie Flores. Okay, again, RPGSite.net. She is a major Mass Effect 3 and Witcher fan. Um, so, again, this kind of just tells you that she she's good into, you know, she's into sci-fi, action, shooter RPGs, as well as uh, action-adventure RPGs. But she also likes Bioware. Because, I don't know, maybe because she likes Mass Effect 3. I'm just putting that all together. So, anyways, she goes into um, about Anthem and how (laughs) disappointed she is. And, again, she's not the only one. Now, the way this game has been described by not just her, but by a lot of people, is the loading screens. The loading screens feel like a giant problem. Um, To go from one area to the next, to the next, to the next. And you have to kind of go back to do 
you kind of have to loop back around. And again, you're just playing the loading screen game. Who play tested this game? Did anybody play test this game? Because that, that would seem like something that could be easily taken care of in a play test. Now, for the, for the budget that this game had, you would think they wouldn't be experiencing this. Now, for ratings, if you're into that sort of thing, um, she gave the rating of a 5 out of 5. No, not 5. A 5 out of 10. So, is, would you consider this like an average game? I, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't resonate with a lot of people. It's not resonating with anyone. And the only way... <laughs> Again, this is almost like the Fallout. I mean, not as bad as Fallout seventy six. Don't get me wrong, uh, but the you know people were expecting a lot. And can this get some improvements down the line that will help it? It would have to be more quality of life improvements. Again, like the loading screen. Um, not it's not a bug. It's just like I said. You you go you as you're progressing through the game. And you want to come back and say sell some stuff. You just you're just sitting and waiting in tons of those things, and it's just it's unacceptable, really. It really isn't in in this day and age. Um, you shouldn't have to deal with a lot of that stuff. So Anthem, did you get it? Did anyone get it? Is it really that bad? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me what you think. What you're thinking? All right. That's going to do it for the news. I hope I'm doing okay. Again, I'm by myself. I'm really not I'm really not used to doing this. Um so what have I been playing? I've been playing, you know, I'm still playing Tales of Vesperia. Um I'm still playing AC Tactics or Octung Tactics. I will be getting Hard West really soon and I can't wait to show you guys that game cuz I absolutely love that game uh, when I played it for Steam. So I will be playing that Probably today is the 27th. It is a... Is it? It's Wednesday. Wow. This week is flying by for me. So I'll be getting it Thursday on the 28th. Tomorrow. I have started Caliglia Effect. I can't... I'm not supposed to really go too far into it. Not. I can play and progress far into it, which I have a little bit. Um, but it's really interesting. It's really, really cool. I like the um, the story behind it. It seems like it's um, now for those. We do have a little bit of a preview on our on the YouTube channel. Um, it is a Japanese dubbed game with English subtitles. Now, for some people, that could be a turnoff. It's it's really not for me. I I don't I don't mind playing those types of games. Um, I don't know if they have English dubbing down the line. That would be nice. It would be great, but I really don't see that that happening. Um, there is a physical version. I have the uh, the digital version. Version now. Again, it's it, it's you're in a school setting, and um, and the way the way it, they're not personas. I want to I do want to compare it to Persona. Now, I have never played Persona. I really want to. Uh, but the school setting really, really reminds me of Persona. Um, so, again, I've been playing Caliglia Effect. I'm still playing Evil Land. Now, I've moved on from the first Evil Land, which is really, really short. Uh, I want to say put, I don't know, maybe two or three hours into it. It's really not. It's a really a taste of the history of RPGs. It really is not that deep. Now I've gotten into the second one. The second one is really, really cool. Uh, you travel back in time. When you go back in time, the the uh, you're again you're doing the whole history of RPGs. You go into it's 16 bit, and then when you go forward in time, you go into it looks like the PS2 era, uh, so a little more 3D. So it's got that it's got that RPG uh, history, and I really like it. I'm really digging. And it actually has a better story than the first one. Now the first one. It was a really it was a mobile game, so it wasn't meant to be anything earth shattering. But this the second one is a little more of uh, again what you would consider a good RPG. <clears throat> so I've been playing Evil Land. If you haven't played Damon X Machina, please please there's a free demo of it. 
it's actually pretty cool. It really is nice. Um, it, it's really interesting. And again, I, I did mention this last time when I had when Corey was uh, with me. It, it's got flying mechs that you can customize. Definitely give that a chance if you haven't already. Uh, what else? What else? I did try Anodyne. Now, I don't consider that an RPG, although we, we will be covering it um, on the site. Because uh, some do consider an RPG. I, I really don't. It was confusing. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not the smartest person in the world. But again, yes, it it just... It just really confused me. I don't know. Uh, it's tough. It's tough to expl <laughs> explain. Um, but yeah, I mean, your first weapon is a broom. It's got the. It's kind of got the uh, earthbound type of element to it. It reminds me of Earthbound and Legend of Zelda. If you could combine those, you may. And you're, if you're into those two things, I'm talking the NES Legend of Zelda. If you're into those two things. This may be for you, um, but I'm not sure if it's for me. Uh, but I did give it a shot. I played, oh, let me see, I played about three or four hours of it. So I think I got a good chunk of it. It just, it wasn't catching me. And I found myself to be really confused by it and frustrated by it. But that's just me. Um, so there's that. And I think that might be it. I've been playing a lot of games. I, I'm starting to get into the first, uh, not the first Dark Souls. Yeah, it is the first Dark Souls, but Dark Souls Remastered. Um, I was thinking about doing it for the channel, but then all of a sudden I got Caligula Effect. I'll be getting Hard West. I'm just going to be playing two games. I may eventually do that um, down the line. I'm not sure. All right, so let's move it along here. So some releases. What do we have here? Let me see. Let me see. Um, let me hit the switch list app. Okay, so some recent releases we have Remy Lore and Child of Light. Those are some uh Remy Lore is not a some might consider an RPG, but it's a pretty um it's a pretty cool action adventure game. Then we have Child of Light, which is a platforming RPG. Very nice. Uh Sky Hill released uh, yesterday, so that was the 26th. Um, do, do, do Warhammer Quest. Now, this is a strategy board RPG that was released yesterday, the 26th, as well. Uh, what do we have moving forward? We have Dark Quest 2. That release is on the 27th, which is today, right now, for me. Delta Rune Chapter 1 is available to, um, on the 28th. Um, moving along again, and Ninja Village also on the 28th, and these are all available uh, to see. It's really cool. You can kind of make lists and whatnot. We talk about it all the time at switchlist.app. Uh, so Riddled Corpses X. This is, um, oh, I might be going way too far ahead. I don't know. Uh, but this is March 5th, okay? Riddled Corpses X is kind of a twin stick shooter action rpg um if you if you're into those things uh and then we have darkest hunter on the fifth as well which is another role-playing board strategy board game um coming up bard's gold also what is this bard's gold that's a new listing and it says it right here it's a platforming arcade action rpg bard's gold on the 5th of march Okay, sales, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to go through with sales. Because by the time a lot of people hear this, sales have come and gone. So, I'm not going to do sales. If you want to see the sales, go to switchlist.app. Or you can go on your Android or on your iOS's, your Apple things. And look at Switchlist, download the app. And you figure it all out on the sales thing on your side of the, of the uh, wherever you are. Okay, it's available everywhere. So look at it there. All right, now we got listener questions. List, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to hear from you guys. All right, so on the Discord chant, on the Discord um, Switch RPG. Again, you can go to discord.switchrpg.com. 
These questions are from there. We have Captain Vulgar. What do you want to see come from the Nintendo and Microsoft recent developments? He'd love to see a cross-platform controller. I disagree about this. I would hate to see this. And I did kind of mention it there. Now, having this would totally confuse me. Again, it's... <laughs> Maybe it's just me. I get easily confused. The A, B, X, Ys are in different places on, on the controller. And that really, really confuses me. It doesn't take much. So, um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he could, he's fine with that. He's just a different cat. Just not me. Now, what would I see, love to see? Um, I think we're kind of getting a lot of rumors. The Game Pass is a really cool idea. I would love to see that kind of come, come together. I would, if they could figure out a way for voice chat communication, that would be perfect. Uh, I don't know if we're ever going to see that, but it would be nice. It would be perfect. It would be something necessary if you want multiplayer games on your console. Um, if they're doing all these cross-platform games, especially things like, you know, we're already seeing it, like Rocket League. And How do you communicate with those people? You can't. It's impossible. It's frustrating. What are you going to emote everyone? No. You don't emote everyone. Give me something to talk to these people. So that would be number one. All right. Then we have Paul Nichols. Now, this is kind of tied in together. Um, everyone's really excited about the Nintendo and Xbox marriage here. Rumored marriage, anyways. If the Switch does start to see first-party Xbox titles, what is on your wish list? Now, for me, it makes sense because of what I'm doing here to see something like Lost Odyssey, Blue Dragon, things of that nature. I don't know, how, again, how well Halo would do on, you know, something like this. But it just, without voice chat, Halo is more of a multiplayer shooter. And without that, it's, you can't talk to each other. Why? Why would anyone want that? So, you know, we have um, things like ReCore. I, would, I actually liked ReCore, although it was incomplete when it was released. I love the Recore. I like the kind of the Metroidvania aspect of it. So I'd like to see Recore, maybe a Recore 2. That would be nice. Uh, a, a lot of people have said with this new marriage, Ori in the Blind Forest has been heavily, heavily rumored. Um, but Gears of War would be nice. You know, unfortunately, Xbox and their exclusives... I don't know. They're not really, as it is now, they're not known for their exclusives. Not really at all. I mean, you could see Cuphead go on there. I mean, that doesn't seem like an intense title, and I think the Switch could handle something like that. Uh, Gears of War, I don't know about the newest one that's coming out, but the older ones, yeah, I think so. I think that could be handled. Now, I don't know, you know, people talked about... Um, Project X Cloud, so kind of streaming gaming games. Would you be able to get bigger titles on there, like a Gears of War Five or what, or the new Halo? I really, I really don't think so. I don't think that's that's not the Switch, not at all. I don't think the Switch could handle that. You're looking at again more Cuphead or In the Blind Forest, things that were on the uh, earlier days of Xbox One. Or any any title on Xbox 360, I think the Switch could handle. But anything other than that, uh, I don't know. Not 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 likely. So yeah, I would like to see Lost Odyssey or Blue Dragon. Um, I think those are the really well known RPGs that people would embrace on the on the Switch for sure. Especially Lost Odyssey. 
I, I think that gets lost in, in the Xbox shuffle for exclusive RPG. Well, maybe not. I think a lot of people like it. But yeah, Lost Odyssey is a really cool game. And ReCore, again, I really liked ReCore, except it was incomplete when it was released. And I don't even know if they finished it. I have no idea. Not a clue. There were parts in that game that you couldn't access because they hadn't completed the game. You needed a tank, a tank bot or robot. I don't remember what it was to kind of get certain things. Like if you were a big achievement hunter, you needed the tank to get to certain parts on the map and it wasn't available. I don't know why they released that stupid game. But anyways, yeah, Ori in the Blind Forest, Cuphead, um, maybe earlier Gears of War. I guess you could do, man, maybe early Halo, but not for multiplayer. Not for multiplayer at all, honestly. No, not for multiplayer. But maybe for the campaign. Maybe just have, like, Halo Campaign Edition. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, that was uh, one of his questions. He had actually had another question. Um, You know what? It's going to be the side quest. I'm going on a side quest all alone today. And and this is it, all right? So remember, we're all about community here at Switch RPG Podcast. So if you want to be part of the show, you can email us. Actually, we did. I'm gonna have to pull that up. We got an email, guys. Let me um, let me get that. But while I'm getting that, I will save the email question for last. So Paul Nichols, he had a second question. I'm gonna have to start charging this guy for questions. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I love I love getting these questions. If you could have any canceled show back on the air, what would it be? L- I'll let you guys think of that. Let me let me pull up the email question really quick. Let's see. Do do do. All right, this is from Seth. Seth, thank you so much for emailing us. You can also you can also tweet at us. You can DM us um, on Twitter. Uh, with at switch rpg you can dm me at the nerd basement always available but uh, all right what um luck okay he wants to know what it does especially in a jrpg do you guys put points into it uh in western rpgs are you guys personally lucky now this uh, luck really depends it really depends on the game um, and, and especially, say, for example, something like a loop-based shooter uh, or something with, uh, for example, not just loop-based shooters, but things with graded, like uh, epic uh, armor or weapons, epic equipment, legendary equipment, rare, magic, all those types of things. Luck may have something to do with possibly like percentage chances of getting those types of gear. Um, also some luck mechanics, again, it really depends on the game and, and me personally, actually, before I get into that, um, so luck will, it could potentially have to do with better, uh, fines, better goal chances. Um, I don't know of luck to do anything else off the top of my head, but usually it has to do with finding better gear, especially in Western RPGs. And better um, drop, you know, better drops. Um, and I think for JRPGs, it may work the same, uh, depending on the battle system. Some uh, luck will um, drop more gold at, you know, in some uh, JRPG battles, or drop different items at the end of a battle if it's turn based. So, really, again, it just depends on the game. Now, me personally, I never, <laughs> I typically don't drop anything into luck. Again, unless I'm looking for something specific. Uh, if I'm really hoping to get more XP or more gold or looking for that specific armor piece or weapon piece, I typically don't put anything into luck. I feel like, for me, it's kind of a wasted stat. It's a stat, you know, a lot of games have it. I just don't use it. I don't use it at all. So, again, that that's just me. I'm sure there are a lot of people, and and I don't consider myself personally lucky. That's that's one was another part of his question, um, but again, I just don't. I never put any any points into luck. But again, it really depends if I'm looking for that something specific, which typically 
typically I'm not. Um, maybe in something like a persistent RPG, like say, for example, um, I don't play Destiny, but I don't even think Diablo 3 or Diablo 2 or Path of Exile. Uh, those are just some examples. I don't think they have luck as a stat. I'm really trying to think here. I think it's just magic find or something something like that. Anyways. Yeah, so yeah, great. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, you could again, like I said, you could you could tweet at us. You could, there are so many different ways you can, you can get a hold of us. But anyways, back to the side quest. I I did I did um say the question let me just go over it again if you could get any canceled show back on the air what would it be all right so yeah uh, what would it be now now i'm it this is canceled show so i'm assuming this is a show that was going on there was no closure in this in the show so for example I can't pick Game of Thrones because there I'm guessing there will be closure in Game of Thrones. I can't pick another show I really liked was House because there it was a mess, but there was closure or Dexter, there was closure there. So this is a show that really had none of that. For me, I'm really having I did really think about this. Because a lot of the shows I watch, they all have that like I said that Ending episode where it really closes everything off. Um, for me, it would have to be Freaks and Geeks. There was only one season of that show, one season, and this this was going back like my this is my high school days, I think. Freaks and Geeks, and was or just, maybe just out of high school. I don't I don't know. T that time was a little fuzzy for me, and there was only one season of it. James Franco, Seth Rogen. Um, there were so, let me pull, let me pull this one up. Freaks and Geeks had so many actors that we know of now. And how did this, sh this show was f hilarious. It was so good. Um, 90, uh, 99. So yes, this was my senior year in high school. Let me look at the cast. Come on. Can I pull this up really quick? All right. So we have Linda. <laughs> Linda Cardellini. She was really, really funny. So James Franco, Sam Levine, Seth Rogen, Jason Segel. Oh, my God. I forgot he was in it. How can I forget? Um, so it had pretty, pretty big names now, anyways, uh, that I would consider uh, big names. And, uh, yeah, man, that show could have been something. Could have been something. But. You know, it wasn't. It was canceled. Um, and, yeah, that, that is my big, big show that I wish was still around. But anyways, remember, we're all about community here at Switch RPG Podcast. So if you want to be part of the show, you can email your feedback and questions to podcast at switchrpg.com. Or you can dive into our Discord server at discord.switchrpg.com. And post in our podcast channel. So, that's actually, that's going to do it for the show. I hope I wasn't, I didn't sound like a babbling idiot. But, on um, that's going to be a wrap for episode 42 of the Switch RPG F Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you to everyone who sent their questions and comments. Keep them coming. Um, remember, you can listen to the show live most of the time on Wednesdays, um, but you can listen each and every Friday on your favorite podcast app, but please give us a rating and review if you can. Your support would be amazing. Also, don't forget, if, uh, I did, I'm sorry, I mentioned that. And if you like what you hear, remember, you can head over to patreon.com slash switchrpg to throw us a dollar or two if you can. If not, it's okay. You're part of the community at Switch RPG, and that's what matters to us the most. And finally, you can head over to SwitchRPG.com for all your RPG needs for the Nintendo Switch. Until next time, I'm not going to tell you to refill your potions and grind your backlog. You know you have to do that stuff. So, see you next time.